Ladies and gentlemen, here we have the Berliner band Nashmer. The Berliner band with the Persian roots. So maybe the first question would be, could you maybe introduce yourself? Very, very short. Magus. Uh, I'm Magus. I play guitar in Nashmer and do back vocals. Okay, thank you. I'm Charuk. I'm the former of Nashmer. I play accordion and sing. I'm Scotty and I'm just doing the performance. I'm the drummer. It's very interesting to see you again because sometimes I don't know with whom should I do the interview because you have a very very much of faces. One time you have uh, in a face like a mock, another time as beaten victoriousness and now as a nashmer. Are there maybe three other bands or maybe is it all the same but with, uh, with the different faces? How could you describe your music in all of the bands? Well, uh, that's true. Uh, as you have we have also the acoustic project called Pain and Land. And uh, we have an uh, ambient uh, classic project called Yajujo uh, Majuj. And, and so several bands. The difference is in, uh, because of genre. I mean, in more we just focus in more uh, oriental and anti-Islamic tema lyrics. In Nashme, we play uh, like a, the telemic uh, genre. In Beach and Victorious, we have like pure hate, so it's like raw black metal. And in Pagan we have Augustic and, and so on. So it's a different variation of, of, the, of the same melody and music. It's very interesting. And is it maybe difficult to be in three bands at the same time? How could you explain it? It's different energy in different projects, so you you have different tema in each of them, and it just uh, define your different um, view of yourself and view of your life. How could you tell us about the releases of your bands? Do you have maybe full band albums or maybe only EPs, only maybe a demos? And which band is the most important for you? Uh, complicated and difficult question. Well, for Mok, uh, I think we have like 14 or 15 releases. It's like five or six full lengths. But recently, uh, when we start to play live, uh, we have live albums. We have few uh, demos and and some splits with some uh, bands around. And for Nashmer, we have one full length and one demo. For Beat and Victories, we have uh, one full length or two, three demos and so on. The focus... Uh, I can't answer that question really. Mm -hmm. What, which was the main reason of the forming of all of those bands? It is maybe that's this reason that you mentioned, this uh, maybe not hate, but this uh, situation with the Islamic themes and so something. What is the main reason or maybe it was something else? Uh, absolutely, that was the, the, the hatred we experience in different countries. And here uh, we find that free democracy so we can express our feelings. And uh, uh, I can continue. What yeah, we are always saying that we are making stage therapy. So we are somehow therapy ourselves on the stage. So we transfer all that hate and all that mm -hmm. things that we saw and we experienced into the music and talk through the music. All of the bands they are playing in the same configuration. We have two German and two Persian members. Could you tell maybe which was the way, as did you know all of them, and in which circumstances you met all of them? Were you maybe active in the other bands before you played in Nashmer, Bitter and Victorious, and maybe the others? Well, I think it was 2012 or 2013. When we met first time, it was of um, another project and Fausto started to write me on Facebook and ask me if I can join another band from him, but this is a different story and one year later he asked me if I want to do some kind of blasting project with him and then I joined Beaten Victorious's. After this I joined Mog. And finally, like half a year now, I am also in Nashville. 
Skeddy, this question is to you. You have very interesting role to play in all of the band. You are a dancer. It's maybe a fun for you or maybe would you like to be more active, like for example playing, singing or song, stuff like that? Uh, no, I don't sing. <laughs> I prefer the performance yeah, stuff. Um, I just try to transport the emotion of the band to, to the audience. What I try, what I think is my job. The band. You have mentioned a very important thing in of activity of your bands, the influence of the Persian music, the Persian folklore and so on something. And could you find maybe the influences and maybe fascination of the other bands of the black metal scene, like for example Norwegian, Swedish or something like that? Do you have maybe the ideals or you maybe are fascinated with the others? Um, true. Um, we listen to everything. I mean, the new genre of music as a new wave of civilization is new thinking, new, new, new riffs, new feeling. I mean, the world going to more chaos and uh, more good music is coming out. I mean, it's like transformation of feeling and energy around the world. Well, uh, specifically not, but between the internet or any uh, music we can search. And the most influence for us, I mean, for me personally, is folkish music because it has roots to the culture directly, like a tree. And that's so important for us because we follow the bands or the concepts who has the roots in the deep culture. Much older, much better. Charuk, you are in the center on the stage because you are playing accordion and you are singing. How could you estimate maybe all of this that you, are, that you, that you can? It is maybe very good for you or maybe... And tell me maybe who is responsible for writing the stuff for all of them sing the songs of the Nashme, Witten, Victorious S and Mock. Mostly for each project, someone comes with the idea of the tema. And then at practice room, we combine all the ideas together and we build the song all together. So everyone has an idea, inspiration, just bring it here and bring it to the practice room and make it all together. And in national, mostly, I pick up some folklore, temas, and Each of Waruru or Faustus has ideas, so we make it all together. Could you tell us maybe how was the beginning of your fascination of the music? Did you go maybe to the special music school or maybe was it only your idea, your own idea to learn to play or something? Well, frankly, I was, uh, I was studying one year at university, so I have a degree in chemistry, I have a degree in ceramic engineering, I have a degree in master of philosophy, I have a degree of ontology and PhD. And at, at the end of it, I just feel I miss something. Something is not right, and that was music. That was the time after long years of studying university. I was found maybe I have to do music. That was the first click in my brain, and that was the point. And after that, I found uh, okay. Now I got my direction in life, so I can express whatever I learned and whatever I research. And that was the main. And how looks the popularity and reception of your bands here in Germany? Are you liked or are you maybe hated? Yeah, it's a hard question. You have to ask it from the audience, but we got good feedbacks, both bad feedbacks, as always. So, um, it's very complicated. Some uh, some audience like us because we make some kind of anti-Islamic black metal, so they just ident identify themselves to the concept. Sometimes they hate us because we are coming from Middle East and it just provoke their um, their feelings about the Middle East and so on. So it's not all the time about the music. It's com it's uh, complex of. Uh, things that they like us or they hate us. 
Yeah, it's like 50-50. I mean, the, the mainly in Germany, the people who cannot express. Because here is a democracy, but it's kind of a brutal dictatorship hidden inside the German groups. And those people who want to have the freedom, they support us. They really get fascinated with our concept. And our main focus is we don't really give a fuck because we do trappy our souls in a stage. Music is trappy for our souls. And the circle here you see is the inner circle and we trappy ourselves. And that's the main thing and it's so valuable for us and we stand for it. How looks like the situation of the metal scene in Iran? Do you have maybe the contacts with the another band and do you have maybe any in this country? Uh, I personally don't have any contact because in Iran I was in a classical scene. But I think I can explain it more because he was in a black metal scene in Iran. And as I know, black metal is completely forbidden and people go to jail or also executed for doing the black metal. Always people doing it like really, really underground and with lots of fear and taking so much risk. Did you have maybe any problems here in Germany in view of your anti-Islamic image or so something? Uh, not really. I mean, the first day uh, when I uh, applied my profile in German government, uh, they really was shocked, but they support, and I'm allowed to do whatever I feel. But from some some scumbags, we just have a different perception. But back in Iran, as you described, because our country is captured by Islamists and uh, the music is forbidden generally. So whatever activities come to art and music, uh, you risk your life. And we lost many friends, many uh, good musicians and bands, and, but we are just lucky uh, and brave and to survive and we will survive. Do you think you have maybe a chance to interest more and more people abroad, not only in the Germany, but only in the rest of Europe and the rest of the world? I believe in our energy to do the music, because when we go to the stage, our music is not about the technique. Um, and we just we just blast our energy to the audience and I think this is the most um, valuable thing about our band because each one of us is 100% on the stage and as you know our music is not technical, fast or with lots of changes but I believe our music is, um, has a soul so I believe in that soul and I think the people who connect with that soul will accept us more and will be interested and others who is blind and just block to that energy don't accept it so I cannot say if we grow with this music or we go down, I don't know but we do our job would it be maybe not commercial, in your opinion, for your band, if you have their big professional label, like for example Century Media, Nuclear Blast or so something, because maybe it would be a good chance to maybe to interest the more people in the world? Uh, that's a good point for being commercial, but um, we know, all of us we know, if the bands get commercial, they lost their souls. Uh, many good bands come with the first demo, second album, and then they get a big record label. And and after that we will see the change in music and we don't want that we have cheap underground record labels uh, support us we are good with it we want to stay underground we don't see any point for commercialism 
because uh, the multi-culti commercialism is not the answer and we're not following that pattern. We stay true as we are and we start to copy our soul. Which are the plans of all your three bands in the next future? Will you appear maybe at the summer festivals in the next year or maybe of the other concerts in the next months? Uh, sure, our plan is to uh, play on the stage more and more as we can and as we, as far as we get offers and we don't, we don't, um, right now, deny. We don't deny and we don't reject any offer. We do whenever it's benefit concert, we get money, we don't get money, we just want to play. And wherever in the world it is, we want to play and spread our message. Mm -hmm. Is maybe a place in the world in which you would like to play very, very especially? Is maybe a place in the world in that you would like to play very especially? Is it maybe your dream to appear there? <laughs> Persia. <laughs> Persia, yeah, back to Persia. Um, homeland. I mean, right now we don't have any land, we don't have any home, and because it's captured. And I hope that not happen to Germany and Europe, according to the recent events. But, uh, yeah, the feeling of childhood back home is really sweet. Mostly we don't dream about this, because we accept the consequence. And we are, we see reality, so there is no chance to... Uh, cooperate with the illusion, but we love to play back in Persia. Why not?